Hey DSA, this is Jenna Gaduzik again this month, and I'm here again to talk to you about AI. So little tips to get you started in this series that I partnered with DSA to share with you all this year, okay? So what I'm going to be covering this month is going to be the tools that I use for generative AI. So that is when we're making imagery. Now that's not just related to imagery. We can make video, we can do audio, we can do so many different things. And if you go to my full list of tools that I shared with you last time, you're gonna be able to see a lot of the other options that are out there. But since the majority of us are designers or aspiring to be designers one day, um, that's what we're going to talk about is the tools that are related to creating the visuals and what they're actually able to do for you in your design process. OK, because I think there's a lot of misconception about what AI can actually do <laughs> because it it really can't do um, a lot of things people think it can. So let's talk about that. Now, um, let me take a step back. So sorry. Uh, these are the tools that I use for these types of images. OK, so I'm going to show you some examples today and what you can actually make with them. The ones on the top are stable diffusion based. So if you remember last time I talked about a few of my favorite core programs um, and stable diffusion, my architect and home visualizer are my top two favorites. The other ones here are also great, but there's so many out there. You've probably seen a ton of these apps that can do the things that I'm going to show you, but a lot of them are made for like homeowners. So for designers, they don't really have the control and stuff that we need uh, them to actually have uh, for professional work. So these ones here, I do love, they do great things. I'm gonna show you them in a couple minutes. And then we have generative um, imagery that we can create using the top two programs here. And then the others either do this exclusively or have this component included with them. So those programs that create these images from prompts or inspiration are my top two favorites are Visual Electric and Mid Journey. Uh, Visual Electric is more expensive, but oh my gosh, the things that you can do in there, it's amazing. Mid Journey does incredible imagery as well, and it's a lot more cost effective, but it does have its limitations, um, in my opinion, in comparison to Visual Electric, which was more created for designers um, and creatives, where Mid Journey was kind of just created for everybody to be able to create any image that's on your mind. But again, I use both. They're both great in their own uh, respect. So these here are some flat lays that I created in both Mid Journey and Visual Electric. Couldn't tell you which one is which at this point because um, I created these quite a while ago. But this is a great place to start using this imagery for your design process because you can create these concept boards and ideas of direction that you want to take a design project and then start presenting them to your client. Um, to just gain that direction and not have to do as much back and forth and, hey, do you like this? Hey, do you like this color palette? You know, like we need to show things that we have in our mind versus explaining it to people that obviously are hiring us for a reason, right? Because they can't visualize that. So this helps with that. Now, the caveat, I guess, um, in my opinion, I think it's fine and actually kind of helpful is that these boards do not have actual real tangible products. It looks like it. And I'm sure you could do some reverse image searching and find something comparable, but these are not being created using like databases of tiles and fabrics. They're just not. <laughs> so what you see here, you can find lookalike things and then your job as a professional is to actually go find and, you know, create and curate this space, right? So these are just jumping off points. And due to copyright restrictions, we're not getting actual products in these two programs. These are just, you know, you could go in this direction. Here's something that kind of looks like it. Other things you can create would be like branded imagery. So if you go to my website or any of my presentations, you'll see the same color palette and kind of like retro, modern, um, futuristic vibe. That's kind of what I'm going for. And so I create a, a set style, actually just by uploading my logo um, in Visual Electric. And now anytime I wanna create a different image, it'll just apply that look or that style to whatever uh, graphics or logos or inspirational imagery that I'm trying to create. So, of course, that's used for brand imagery, but styles can be applied to so many different parts of your workflow. Okay. 
seamless texture. So if you are rendering, if you create your own product collections and product lines, um, seamless textures are where your pattern will repeat itself without that seam or line in the middle because it doesn't match up quite right. So seamless textures can be created very nicely in mid-journey. There's just a little prompt that you would use for that. So you might be using these things for, you know, flooring options. You might be creating your own collections and then having these prints actually printed on furniture um, patterns, you know, for fabric, artwork. You can have them upscaled and create art, which is the next thing here. Um, I create artwork for, um, and then I'll bring it into Photoshop if I need to, but I'll create artwork for my clients' houses that they can print and then frame. Um, and everything's cohesive and works together. And a lot of the time I'll even use a, um, a starting image, just any image or like a rendering of the space, honestly. Um, and then I will bring that into Photoshop and create artwork or textures or patterns that are all based off that one image. So tons of things we can do, but this is a great starting point for artwork that can then be enlarged and then print it, all right? So something else that we can do is just kind of taking our design boards, like the kitchen design board I created on the left for my client, and then she wanted to see how the space could potentially look with a blue backsplash. Now, I actually took this concept board that I made with all the products on it, uploaded that to ChatGPT and said, hey, make me a, a prompt that I can use in mid-journey or visual electric um, that would basically put all these pieces that you see on this board together into a kitchen and I need a blue tile backsplash to show her. So I had a ton of different iterations of this. Notice how I didn't say that I mentioned, um, you know, here's where the range needs to go. Here's where the, um, you know, the layout. I didn't mention the layout. And that's because it would not do it even if I asked, okay? It would look similar, but every time you create a generative image using one of these two programs, they're new images. So it's it's going to like re like mix up your prompt words and then come out with new different images every single time. So the control is not to put your actual image in there and then like say, apply these pieces. You know, I feel like everybody, if everybody could do that, that might concern me a little bit, <laughs> um, that people could be taking our, our work and then just applying it to their room. So um, careful what you, you ask for, if that's something that you're like, oh, that would be nice. Well, if everybody gets that, it would be a little bit nerve wracking for designers, I would think, because this is really just to show concept. This is just to show like, here's all the pieces, you know, I've already put this in a floor plan. I've already put this in other things, but I didn't do a render. She, she didn't pay me to render this space just for the selections. So this is me just basically saying, here's how this could look. If you wanted to add a blue tile, um, this is the general vibe. What do you think? And then she was able to sign off on that. We could go find the actual blue tile that we we're going to be using. So just a great tool for communicating um, visually what your ideas are, but also just making sure that they know like, this is not your kitchen. <laughs> like we've already been through the plans. You know that this isn't your kitchen. This is just to show you how they all work together, okay? All right, so here's an example for you of my actual office and how I use generative AI for the imagery right here. I already knew like, kind of what I wanted it to be. I already knew the general colors. This is kind of what my office looks like now. Like I was in the process of building um, like the units behind me and stuff, but this is what my desk looks like. This is what my chandelier looks like. So I had created inspiration and said, you know, I kind of want this rainbow looking thing and here's the colors. And with that, I was able to actually paint my office not exactly what it was in that um, in the inspiration, but I took that and I ran with it, but it was a starting point. Okay, that's a starting point for ideation and for visual communication. All right. Now let's talk about stable diffusion because stable diffusion is different. Where the first ones we were getting new images, we're using words and we're just saying, give me some inspo. Here's, here's some words of what I want to see come up on my screen. Now stable diffusion is different because it's basically taking your image and then it's enhancing it or it's changing your image. So I know that this isn't exactly how it works, but for us that are not techies, we can think about this as like, 
the stable diffusion looks at the lines of the image that you've uploaded and it keeps those lines there for the most part sometimes it likes to get creative and kind of color outside the lines we got to hone it back in um it's not perfect by any means but what you see here is how we can take the exact image that we're working with whether that's a rendering or a concept board or an actual photo and we can say i want to see it like this instead so the one on the left you see is a render that I created in my Doma Visualizer. The one on the right is a style transfer using my architect. So basically with style transfers, that is where we can say, okay, well, here's my image. And then I uploaded another image um, that was also AI. I don't take other designers work. I only use my own imagery or AI generated imagery for this. Um, and then I applied a different style. So same room, just now we see it with this other color palette and kind of like coastal vibe, right? All right, so that's one thing it can do. Um, here is another example of that. So this is just um, upscaling for render. Uh, this is my render down here. And then it just upscaled my image. I use home visualizer for this one, um, but it just upscaled my image for better quality. All right, here's another one of those examples. So 4K rendering, and then here is the AI enhanced. So you really have to kind of zoom in and look at it close, but it, it brought out all the characteristics of that image um, that I was talking about. And now here's kind of flipping back for a second, but now that you've seen um, the original, so here's my original render, here's how I just enhanced it. Here's going back to that first thing with the style transfer that I was telling you about, Here's that rendering, but I applied this AI generated image as my style reference, uploaded both of them, and then it applied it to my rendering. So it applied like the blues and the, the light colors and, and that type of thing uh, to just give you a totally different look in this space. So that's a great component in use case for how you might wanna like, you know, here's here's the space, here's the source image exactly, but I would apply, you know, a style reference and then be like, oh, you don't want a, a white cabinets? Okay, well, let's see how they look in green or let's change up the vibe completely and use something darker like this and, you know, kind of really, really go <laughs> in the opposite direction. So that's one of the uh, components of uh, stable diffusion programs. I, again, I did a lot of these in either my architect or home visualizer for the enhancements. But here's the last thing I'm gonna leave you with for today. And that is sketches. I cannot draw to save my life. <laughs> that's why I went the tech route because I am not a sketcher. I've tried so hard, um, but this is my husband's office and the plan that I had in mind that I sketched out in my terrible sketchy sketch. Um, and I ran the sketch through a few different programs. These were some that would like kind of make it more lifelike. This one applied a sketch look to it. Um, but I was also able to come up with like, going back to the first part of today, the visual electric is where I made this one concept. So generally, like, here's my sketch, here's my idea. Now I took the words from my idea and created inspiration as like a realistic image. And I was able to show my husband and be like, hey, here's some of the things that I'm thinking for this space, what do you think? And I gave him a few different options and we were actually able to pull it together <laughs> with, with those images. But I, stepping back here, I took that sketch that I made and I, actually added after we looked at the ideas um, that I had come up with, with the concept images that I just showed you from Visual Electric, um, I went into Canva I made, or Photoshop. I made a five minute board by simply grabbing a bike that will probably hang behind him. Um, some of the wood panels, a random rug that we don't actually even have yet, but I had something similar to it. The desk that I bought and then the chair that we already had. And then I just laid down carpet and paint. Okay, so this board I made in less than five minutes, and then I was able to upscale that board and have it look real. And then I actually took it one step further, brought it into this free, uh, though you can pay to get the thing removed, this free video, um, generative vi video app where I made the bike go off. So this image was literally this, but I went to either my architect or home visualizer and I said, make this look real. And that's what we got here. And then I took that image and I ran it through Pika.art, which is what you see here. And I said, make the 
make the bike drive off the screen. And that's how we got to that. Okay. So the capabilities here, I just want to recap for generative AI, both in the stable diffusion bucket and also like the, um, you know, regular generative AI where you are prompting images from your words or inspirational photos. Um, it is purely conceptual. Okay. Nothing here is to scale. Things will change in your images right now due to the control or lack thereof of some of these models. But generally, these are great tools for you to enhance your existing images, your renderings, your concept boards, um, and then for ideation in general. So just coming up with the ideas that are in your head after you leave your client's house and you have all these things that you want to show them. So before rendering, before making selections and without having to look online for endless amounts of, um, you know, inspirational photos, which would probably come from another designer, right? Now you control that process. You control the things that you're showing them and can make them in less than a minute with the ideas that you have in your mind. All right. So that is what generative AI is about and, um, you know, how it can help you in your profession as designers to enhance your, your imagery and streamline your visual communication. All right. So I hope that was helpful. Um, come check out AI for interior designers.com. We have tons of trainings over there and some free resources. If you didn't grab the free list already, definitely get that. But I will see you next month for another AI training here with DSA. All right. See you next time.